Hello friends and welcome to another tutorial with me again. Today I'm painting a cute little magical pumpkin house in my watercolor sketchbook from Hanemule. This is a 100% cotton sketchbook, 250 GSM thick. And as usual, I spray my color palette with some water and let it sit to absorb while I'm sketching the motif. For the pumpkin, I want to draw an oval organic shape um, and leave some space around it for adding details such as autumn leaves, mushrooms, rocks, moss and some grass. At this point, I felt like the pumpkin was taking too much vertical space and wanted to reduce the height um, to leave some space for the rest of the details. Now I'm drawing a little dancing fairy at the top of the mushroom to add some extra magic to the painting. Maybe she is the one living in this pumpkin house. Just some imagination. And in case you were curious, this is a mechanical eraser I'm using for removing details. Thank you. 
now it's time to paint and I want to first paint a faded background like a frame around the illustration and for that I use this wet on wet technique where I pick a clean wet brush and just wet the surface with some clean water then I go ahead and drop some paints in the wet area and I'm using a round brush this is a synthetic brush from a local Swedish brand for the colors I'm using some lemon yellow yellow ochre and a tiny bit of sap green around the pumpkin area since the paper is wet when you add the paint it will automatically flow and blend um, so don't over blend it and let the water do its magic after it has dried it will create this nice faded and blurred background now i'm adding a tiny bit of the sap green to the background uh, trying to avoid the pumpkin itself because there i want to end up having a clear orange color and having the green might end up making it look a bit muddy or brownish having a paper towel is always handy i now remove some excess paint and water let it sit for a few minutes and then go over with the hair dryer to speed up the drawing process i pick a smaller brush smaller round brush and this time using the clean water i will only wet the surface of the pumpkin where i'm adding the orange color um, start by lighter colors not add too much and darken as you go so as you can see again having the wet surface lets us create this even spread of paint um, without leaving that many hard edges this is called wet on wet technique and an important technique for watercolor painting I'm adding some red to my light orange um, it's a vermilion red specifically um, and little by little add more definition and contrast to the painting by adding darker colors an important technique that comes with practice here is that I constantly clean my brush and use the paper towel to control the amount of water on the brush for spreading the paint so i pick some of this mix of orange and red put it down then tap my brush into the water to remove the extra uh, paint from the brush which gives me a clear load of water on the brush and then apply it again on the surface to spread the paint so pick the paint put it down clean the brush with water and spread the paint with your clean brush it's a bit hard to explain uh, but i bet if you just give it some practice and try you will get hang of it so now I picked some brownish red uh, to darken the mixture again um, and adding another layer of uh, contrast to make the pumpkin pop even more.
Now I let the pumpkin dry completely before I start adding in darker details. Here I'm using a sepia brown together with some neutral black to create this super dark brownish color and just painting the details. For painting the larger leaves, I use the wet on wet technique to get this even spread of colors, uh, especially because the area I'm painting is larger. And another thing it's good to think about is how you combine uh, colors or how you choose which color to put next to which. So, you know, I want to paint these autumn leaves. Um, they come in all different colors and shades. Here, I choose to put the green tones closer to the pumpkin and the yellowish and orangish tones a bit further away because I don't want to end up having orange on top of orange. Um, because if we have that, then the elements won't pop as much. So as you can see, the closer to the pumpkin, I try to use a different color. In this case, it's green and I fade it to uh, the orange or yellowish tones uh, further away from the pumpkin shape. And I use the same wet on wet technique for creating the moss, starting with a light green, a mixture of sap green together with lemon yellow. And while it is still um, a bit wet or damp, I add in uh, dots of darker green. And when you're painting shapes that are overlapping like this one, I make sure to let the leaf uh, that I painted first to dry completely before starting to paint the other one. Otherwise, if both areas are wet, the color will blend um, and you will end up getting the effect of wet on wet technique. These are a bit hard to explain, but I guess with practice, you will understand uh, my point. And again, I increase the contrast as I go little by little, let them dry and build up the layers. Like in this case, I felt like the pumpkin needs to pop up more. And for that, I'm darkening the shapes around it.
Now it's time to add some details and final touches. Um, for that, I choose to use my colored pencils for making some outlines and tiny details. Um, a tip I have for adding outlines is using multiple colors similar to the colors you have on the foreground. So in this case, I'm using both green and orange to create a more dynamic look and apply orange or red closer to areas where I have those colors and green where I have green. Now I want to show you how to add lighter details using opaque mediums. Here I have a Molotow acrylic marker which I'm going to use for these tiny dots on the mushrooms. You can also use white gouache or another medium that I recently found from Schminke. It's called Opaque White. I only found it in white. It's similar to uh, gouache, but sort of more watered down somehow. Um, so I just started uh, experimenting with it recently. For gouache, I always add a tiny bit of water um, blend it well and in this case I'm adding a tiny bit of uh, green watercolor to have a super light green and you can see how it covers or how it looks on top of the dark background. You can never achieve this with the watercolors really and um, gouache is usually used in combined in combination with watercolors for this purpose. Since the other medium I'm using is super white, I'm having a hard time to get this warm tone. It's end up getting um, more towards pastelish tones. And here I have my shiny watercolors from Colors by Vita, which is a Swedish brand, Swedish local brand. These are handmade watercolors. I will add more information about it in the description below. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. Happy painting and see you in the next one.